Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. One of the added benefits of having performed the occlusal adjustment on the mounted cast is that it gives you an idea of how much tooth structure is going to have to be removed to achieve the desired occlusion. Uh, this then, you, with this, then you can forewarn the patient and, uh, and it is not of a surprise to the patient if it is necessary to go through a gold restoration or some other type of restoration that is in the patient's mouth. Another benefit is that you can uh, visualize and possibly do a diagnostic wax up and set up on this uh, on the mounted cast. Now the case, the occlusal adjustment has been performed. We now have a stable occlusion in the centric relation position. We did end up with a slightly long centric. We see this minor or small movement from centric relation to centric occlusion in the finished product. And the excursions now have uh, the guidances where they will probably be best tolerated by this patient's occlusion. In other words, we have taken some of the stresses off of those, uh, those maxillary lateral incisors and we do have a group function now which uh, seems to be best for this patient. To better visualize uh, what else is going to be done, a diagnostic wax up of the proposed restored crown can be performed and a diagnostic setup of the proposed replacement teeth can be done. Now we could, uh, we want to look closely at the diagnostic wax up to see what advantages there there are to doing the diagnostic wax up. One advantage is to see if the buccal cusps, the supporting cusps, will uh, coincide or will fall along a good plane of occlusion. If they do, if they do not, you have the chance at this point of going to the patient and altering the maxillary cast or the maxillary tooth in the patient. So in this particular patient, I adjusted uh, one area slightly, it's indicated with a, red, with a red mark here, to open the central fossa to accept the buccal cusp of the lower molar tooth and it fits in rather nicely now and in the lateral excursion that cusp is not a working interference but disarticulates uh, rather well. So also if the maxillary tooth were hyper erupted it would allow you to see how much reduction of the maxillary tooth would ha that would have to be done in order to end up with a desirable plane of occlusion. So you can use it to improve the plane of occlusion or the centric stop areas. It will also, because we will be surveying this crown, it will also give you an indication of the amount of axial reduction that you would need when preparing this uh, abutment tooth for the full crown restoration. In addition, on the distal surface, thinking further along the lines of when the partial denture is fabricated, it allows you to place the occlusal rest seat in the wax in the desired position and it will give you an idea of how much relief under the wax will be needed in order to have an occlusal rest seat that is of adequate size that will not interfere with the opposing occlusion. Now looking at the replacement teeth, a similar situation uh, occurs. If we look at them in contact in the centric position, If these teeth were hyper-erupted, 
we could get an idea by cutting down the stone teeth how much reduction was necessary to end up with a desirable plane of occlusion. And we can also, as with the diagnostic wax up, we could also alter, as I have this cast, we could also alter the centric, potential centric stop areas by flattening uh, humps in the, in the opposing uh, occlusion by just grinding little flat areas and improving those potential centric stop areas to receive the replacement teeth better. The one thing that we also want to think about in terms of the partial denture is how many replacement teeth are going to be necessary for that given case. Now in this case, the opposing occlusion is a bridge. So we don't really have to come with a replacement teeth. We don't have to extend it to uh, include and oppose this terminal abutment. Because this is a bridge, it is all connected together. This much occlusion back to this point will stabilize the occlusion very nicely. We cannot, we won't get hyper eruption of this molar because we're not contacting it. If that were not included in a bridge, we would have to extend the occlusion slightly posterior to put a centric stop against that opposing tooth to prevent hyper eruption. But in this case, because it is against a bridge in the maxillary arch, we will minimize the force on the partial denture by not extending the occlusal surface back to uh, the retromolar pad area. So uh, this is a good, a good mechanism for reducing the stress on the partial denture. In lateral excursions, in lateral excursions, we, as we mentioned before, we are lifting off those replacement teeth. The guidance is coming from the remaining natural dentition. All the working guidance and protrusive guidance is borne by the natural dentition and is taken off of the replacement teeth. Lateral forces to the replacement teeth would, would be magnified uh, by a fishtail effect on, because if we project the partial denture being connected to the other teeth in the arch, If we put a lateral force to this partial denture by putting lateral guidances on it, it would be putting lateral forces to all the teeth that it connects, that it is connected to or in contact with. And this is not necessary for mastication, proper mastication of food. Mainly the, the thing we're using the replacement teeth for is to stabilize the occlusion particularly when there are individual teeth up above and not bridge work. We want to prevent hyper eruption of teeth. And it gives you also a little additional chewing surface. So uh, uh, the, there are two, three rest areas that we've also ground in on these diagnostic casts to project where we were going to place our occlusal rest. We know uh, we have an indication of where we're going to want them uh, by thinking of design as we've uh, coming along in the treatment planning, uh, in the pre-treatment planning procedures. And these are areas where potential rests will probably be necessary. This, a major occlusal rest for the primary clasp unit, this for an indirect retainer, and on the opposite bicuspid, the mesial rest here, also for an indirect retainer. Now how does that play into the occlusion? If we can look at it from the lingual, we may get an indication whether the occlusal rest seat that we have prepared in this diagnostic uh, setup is adequate because we want to uh, show that there's going to be metal 
interposed between these, this opposing dentition, that, the, uh, the, that is the occlusal rest is going to be interposed between these two and we want to create space for that occlusal rest. We don't want to get to the point where we have to grind all the way through and weaken that occlusal rest in order to let the teeth come into the contact that we have predetermined by the occlusal adjustment. This gives us an indication of how big an occlusal rest seat we need. This is also true of the indirect retainers. We want to make sure that they do not interfere with the occlusion in the final product. So a diagnostic wax up and a, di or, and a diagnostic setup, although not indicated in 100% of the cases, is certainly a valuable adjunct in treatment planning procedures. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.